Welcome back to Dark Corner Studios. My name is Aiden Wolf, and today it's the battle of the SMs. You've got the SM58 versus the SM7B, and which one is better? Well, I mean, this one it costs a lot more money than this one. This one's also a lot sexier. So not sexy. What if I told you that these microphones are more similar than you think? And they're more similar than the price would let on. You want to dig in? All right, let's do this. This is so not sexy. This is Aiden Wolf. So it's the battle of the SMs. You got the SM7B, you've got the SM58. Which one is better? Well, you know, if you want to look on the surface, uh, this SM7B outperforms the SM58 in every trial. But does it really? Well, kind of, kind of not. I mean, this thing has become a, almost a pop culture icon for music recording, podcasts, streamers, everything under the sun. Well, the Shure SM58 has become a pop culture icon for being a stage mic, uh, being able to hammer nails. That's a thing. But the two of them differ so greatly in price, yet are almost the exact same microphone. So how is that possible? Now, we're going to get into some of the sound quality of both and maybe things you can do to try to make an SM58 sound a little closer to an SM7B. But first, we've got to go over some of the technical specs of the two. And while I would like to pretend that I'm the all-knowing god that can rip these down and put them back together and fully understand the technical properties of both, I usually like to defer that to a buddy of mine. Now, this is super uber tech nerd Dylan. Uh, he's kind of my go-to guy when I have a question about this stuff, and he's going to break down exactly what makes these two microphones tick. So without further ado, here's Dylan. The SM7B, the SM58, what's the difference? That's a question that gets asked a lot, and there are actually some subtle differences between these two mics. But in order to understand why those subtle differences are so important, first we actually have to look at why they're similar. So to help illustrate that, I just want to forget about the SM7B for a sec and focus just on the SM58. And specifically, I want to compare the SM58 to one of its older cousins, the SM57. The SM57 came out in about 1965 and the 58 in about 1966. Both of them, if you ask most people, are kind of the same mic. They're both dynamic cardioid mics. They're both sort of built in this rugged barrel-like design, and both of them, in fact, are based on the same Unidyne 3 mic capsule. So, why do we need both of them then? Well, the devil's in the details, and specifically in the application. So, looking at the 57, we can already see here that the grill is sort of directional, it's more slender, it doesn't really look like a vocal mic. Whereas the 58 has this sort of spherical vocal mic-esque grill to it. You can probably see where I'm going with this. The SM57 doesn't really have any plosive control on it in that there's no kind of foam underneath this grill to protect from wind or gusts or air bursts or whatever. Whereas the 58 actually does have a little bit of foam on the inside to help protect from plosives. Although anybody who's used a 58 will tell you it doesn't really honestly do all that much. But that said, it is there as an extra layer of protection. Also, the capsule, the actual cartridge of the 50, the SM57, does not have any kind of shock mounting on it really. Whereas in the 58, there is actually a little bit of pneumatic shock mounting to help guard from any seismic movement or whatever. So why do we use these? Well, the 57 essentially is considered like a Swiss Army knife of microphones. If you have a sound source that you've never mic'd up before or whatever, and you need something to sound half decent on it, the 57 will do you pretty good. You can use it on sound effects, you can use it for instruments, you can use it for vocals, for singers, what have you, and the 57 will do a pretty good job. The 58 just takes that and gives you a little bit more of a portable vibe. The 58 is designed to be a handheld microphone. It's designed to be beat up. It's designed to be screamed into. It is like the 57 ver uh, microphone, but the specialized version for vocals. So now that we have taken a look at those two mics, now I want to bring the SM7B back into the equation. The SM7B compared to these two fellas is actually a lot younger. The SM7 originally came out about 1973. The SM7A in 1999, and the SM7B, the one that we've come to know and love, from 2001. What we really want to talk about is why these two are so different, or why they're not so different. Both of them, again, are based, just like the SM57, 
are all based on the same Unidyne 3 mic cartridge. The SM7 features superior shock absorption on the inside to protect the cartridge from any kind of seismic movement, any kind of low-frequency rumble from jostling it around. In addition, the SM7 also features beefier onboard uh, interference shielding. So between uh, radio frequency waves or mains power hum or just noise in general, the SM7 has some good built-in safeguards, built-in protection and shielding from that kind of thing. So what else do we have? Well, as you can see, obviously the grill work on the top of the microphone is very different. If you take off the mesh that comes with the SM7, we'll see that the grill is actually, the, the business end of the grill is a good two inches or so away from the actual mic element, which helps to guard against two things. One, it helps with plosive control, obviously. Two, it helps with eliminating something known as the proximity effect, which is that low frequency boost you get when you get really close up onto a microphone. With the 58, also, we can notice that the compared to the 57, where its grill is actually very, very, very close to the actual mic element, the 58 has about a half an inch between the top of the grill, the business end of the grill, and the actual mic element itself. So the SM7 takes that idea and just sort of amplifies it. And that's not a bad thing. The SM7 comes by default with the A7WS windscreen, which they call the close talk filter, what have you. It does darken up the sound a little bit, but gives you even that much more plosive protection. So if you're using this in a podcast situation and you're bringing in somebody who doesn't have any experience speaking into a microphone professionally and you think they're going to be popping their peas all over the place, probably a good idea to maybe toss the close talk filter. And it is a really nice feature that Shure includes that with the SM7Bs. So other than that, you might expect that because of the price point and because of the size difference, that the SM7 has something in it that the SM58 does not. And it's actually the other way around. The SM7 does not have something in it that the SM58 and the SM57 do have, and that is the presence of a transformer. Dynamic microphones traditionally come with built-in transformers because the output of the cartridge is very low. So to help ease off of that a little bit and give people a fighting chance with some more compact and economical preamps, most dynamic mics these days come with a built-in transformer that just gives the signal a little bit of a boost. So you can use a normal preamp with it within reason. The SM7 does not have it. Why is that? Why did they omit the transformer with the SM7? Well, to be honest, the one downside of a transformer is that it imparts its own little sonic flavor. Nothing that's inherently bad, just very different. In the case of the SM58, for example, if we look at the frequency response graph, we can sort of see there's a little presence bump past 2K, and then there's a, some bass roll-off going on here as well. That mostly has to do with the presence of the transformer. If we compare it to the SM7's frequency response graph here, we can see that the SM7's curve is a little bit more flat. And, as you might expect, that largely has to do with the absence of that transformer, which is good. It means that the sound coming out of the SM7 is a little bit more pure, a little bit cleaner, um, but with that comes with one glaring major problem, and that is that the output of the SM7 is infamously quiet, in that you're going to need a pretty sizable preamp to juice this baby. Uh, Shure actually recommends a preamp with at least, at least 60 decibels of amplification. So then the question comes, is it worth it? Well, the SM7 and the SM58, and the SM57 for that matter, are all very similar. And if you're not really going to benefit from some of the practical advantages of the SM7, such as its plosive control, shock absorption, the built-in yoke system that they have installed on it here, and the truth is, it really all comes down to taste and preference. You have to listen to the two of them back to back and make the decision for yourself, for your needs, for whatever you're going to be using it for, for your ears. It's all about taste. So this is your SM58. It sounds decent. Uh, it has a lot of the same characteristics as the SM7B. It just, it really doesn't look nice. And you know what? I, I kind of crap on this microphone a lot, but... This is the kind of microphone you have on stage. This is the kind of microphone you see uh, public speakers use. But it's not really something that rings your bell when you're going to do a podcast or a stream. This just isn't very attractive. It has nothing about it that kind of screams, perfect mic for my setup. However, 
the sound quality, which a lot of people dismiss for a $99 microphone, this is excellent sound quality for whether it be a podcast, whether it be a YouTube video, it doesn't really matter. This will actually get the job done for a very decent price. And then we have the SM7B, which requires even more gain than the SM58. So now you have these two microphones. You can actually hear them just boosted, but we're also going to go over exactly how they sound in post. This is future Aiden, and I was sitting down with some of this footage and some of the audio, and I realized, boy, these mics are close in sound. So we're going to have a little bit of fun here. While I'm testing the two microphones, I'm not going to tell you which one you're listening to while you're listening to it, okay? So let's see if you can figure out, is it the really expensive SM7B or is it the SM58? Let's have a little bit of fun with this. Let me know down in the comments if you got it right. Now, I'm gonna be switching between the two microphones, but can you tell which one is the SM7B and which one is the SM58? Remember, they're both got their levels boosted in post, and they both are being worked with dynamic processing, a little bit of EQing, and a few other RX7 tricks. So, can you tell which is which? They're switching back and forth while I talk, so it should be pretty obvious which one is making the sound, right? Not really. They're actually closer than you think, and well, they're pretty much the same microphone with a few tweaks here and there. So let me show you up on screen exactly which is which. This one is the SM7B, and this one is the SM58. So did you figure it out? Were you able to tell which one was which? Personally, while I was going through, I actually had to label them because I could not tell. So if that's any indication, whew. Anyways, let me know what you think down in the comments. Is this way offline? Am I insulting your SM7B purchase? Or does this give you a little bit of reason for pause? Hmm. Anyways, if you like this video, hit the like button, get subscribed, and I'll see you. Yes, I will see you. Maybe Dylan too, in the next video. Who knows? Never know when Dylan comes around.